and welcome to the Animal Welfare Group Nigeria webinar series. I am Dr. Yasiri Oluwa Shunsera. I am the coordinator of the Animal Welfare Group Nigeria, and I'm glad to welcome all of you to today's meeting. We've had six webinars in this year, and uh, this will be the seventh in the year 2023. We have also planned out six virtual inaugural lectures for the year 2023. The Animal Welfare Group Nigeria was founded in the year 2019 after the gathering of researchers and students um, at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkota, Nigeria. And now we have expanded to over 80 members in about 22 affiliations in the country. And uh, over the years, we have presented uh, webinars and virtual inaugural lectures. And we also had a panel discussion last year. So today, sorry, before I go on, the mission of the Animal Welfare Group Nigeria is to foster collaboration between researchers in animal behavior and welfare in Nigeria, Africa, and all over the world. Our aim is also to foster collaboration between researchers. This is an opportunity for you to network with other people who may be of like mind or who are researching in the same area as you are. And finally, uh, to educate the public about the importance of animal welfare. So everybody is welcome to join our meetings because we know that you you'd always find something or you always learn something. Today we have uh, Professor Koladi in our midst and he will be speaking to us. And our moderator for today is Dr. Uluwashim Ojeladi. Other information or other announcements will be posted in the chat. So please try to follow the chat. And thank you for joining. Don't forget to introduce yourself in the chat and also where you are joining us from. I would like to hand over to the moderator for now to continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mrs. Oluwashim Yesere. I, I don't know what's happening, but I find it difficult. My video is on, but I don't know why my video is not coming on. I am the moderator for today's meeting. I am Hojela Diolua Shion Kristana, as it has been said, and I'll be introducing the speaker for today. Let me use this medium to welcome everybody once again to the first meeting in the month of June. And I I'll be introducing our speaker now, Okola De Lawa, a scientist in agricultural innovation, development, and knowledge communications. About 20 years ago, precisely in November 2000. Sorry, I don't know why everybody's having issues with network, but let me take the biography of her presenter. Okola Adelawal Adebowali is a lecturer and research scientist in agricultural innovation, development, and knowledge communication. He began his lecturing and research career in November 2003 as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Agricultural Extension and Rural Development at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkota, Nigeria. Based on the philosophy uh, extension practice that emphasizes the need for extension practitioners to work in a network of system for appropriate development of knowledge that could enable change. His research focus has uh, spread across the sector of the agricultural system, working in conjunction with researchers in animal, soil, crop, human nutrition, and post-harvest handling disciplines. His passion has largely been on making research development relevant to the needs of the immediate society and disseminating the output of such research to enable social and economic development of the large society and attainment of quality life. His research dynamics informed his focus on understanding animal behavior 
and educating livestock keepers on this for better farm animal management and sustainable and profitable uh, production. Join me in welcoming our guest speaker for today, Professor Okonla Omo, or, sorry, Professor Okonla De Lawal Adebowali. You're, we're happy to have you, sir, please. Uh, the floor is yours. You can go on with your presentation. So thank you for, for the citation. And uh, it's a pleasure to be a guest speaker among this uh, noble group of uh, animal welfare group uh, in Nigeria. And having worked a little bit uh, in relation to animal behavior, I'm able to come up with this uh, theme for today's uh, presentation that says, animal behavior, communicative signals for responsive actions by livestock keepers. What that simply means is that animals will ordinarily display their natural behavior for several purposes, but it's also a form of communication that livestock keepers need to understand so that they can actually manage the animal very well. And that's why this next slide uh, have that uh, inscription taken from the Encyclopedia of Animal Behavior 2010 that says, understanding animal behavior is the best way to know whether we are keeping the animals appropriately. So that takes us to animal behavior. So I simply put it as any form of display by an animal or group of animals that enhances uh, their quality of life or quality of living. And the display of action, next slide please. The display of action by the animals can take different forms. It could be by movement, blinking, eating, walking, flying, vocalizing, huddling. And this display of action are with, a, are with a purpose or purposes, as we can see, that the display action by farm animal is either to make the animal to survive in its environment or to ensure safety or be protected. It could be for social interaction among uh, fellow animals or even with human beings. It could be for reproduction, adaptation, or cognitive understanding of their yeah. environment. And what determines animal behaviors? Uh, basically two things. It's either by instinct or by conditioning. So the instinct is what the uh, core scientists refer to as a uh, genetic or genetically influenced behavior. That is the genetic makeup of animals determine their behavior. But for those of us who are much more interested in the uh, social relation of farm animal with human, we refer to it as a natural endowment. That is, there is the understanding that a particular type of animal have a way of behaving. We, that's what we refer to as instinct. And therefore, of course, the environment can condition behavior of animal. So whether the environment is cold, whether there is a potential danger, whether there is heat stress, all this, we also influence behavior of uh, an animal at a particular time. So, and whatever the display action is, those actions simply means, next slide, those actions simply means communicative signals or animal communication, as we have grown to understand it. That is for every action displayed by animal, they are nothing but communicative signal or what we simply refer to as animal communication. So, and of course, we I will simply define animal communication 
as a transfer of information by one or group of animals to one or more another animals to stimulate them to action. That is, within the uh, animal kingdom, animal will communicate with uh, one another to stimulate them to action. It's just the same way in the human kingdom. We communicate with one another with a view to stimulating the receiver of our information to action or to change the behavior as the general definition of communication says. So likewise, we observe that in animal. An animal communicates basically in two forms. It's either by vocalization, which we call uh, oral communication in human, or by signal, which we call symbol, symbolic communication in human. Those are the two major ways by which animals communicate. So, and like I said earlier on, animals communicate for a purpose, just as humans communicate for a purpose. Their communication, either by vocalization or by signal, could be to attract attention of fellow animal or to express a need for certain things or to indicate that the animal is in danger, or to alert other animals to potential danger. Or it could be to call on their young ones to come closer or to move away. Animal could also communicate as a way to establish their dominance or to defend their territory, or even to coordinate behavior of other group of animals. As we may see, a, a sheep may bar until all other flock come to that particular direction and they may go in a particular direction. So animal communicate to coordinate the group of others. So, and that now takes us to types of animal. Of course, in our basic biology, uh, we are made to know that animals are classified into various groups, either as a vertebrate or invertebrates. And then based on their environment, they are also categorized into various ones, like apes, mammals, uh, fish, reptiles, and so on. But for the purpose of this uh, discussion, and in my interest as a researcher in uh, farm animal, of course, like every other researcher, they cannot be interested in every aspect of animal. They may have a chosen link, just as our uh, group coordinator is much giving it to end. So likewise, other animals. So for that reason, I'm classifying animals into three basic group in the next slide as farm animals, wild animal, and pets. These are simple enough for common man to understand because the focus of extension is to simplify all the scientific jargons for layman farmer to be able to understand. So, and I missed these uh, three groups of animal. Uh, the interest or the focus is on small ruminants. So we can see the farm animals cut across sheep, cattle, goats, as you can see in the next slide, chicken, and so on. These are the animals we domesticate for meat production. So unlike other pets that many animal researchers focus on, so we are focusing on farm animals, which is more uh, paramount to us in, in our chosen field of agriculture. And I miss them all. Uh, the focus is on sheep and goats. So because these are the common farm animal in our environment. Although cattle is also common, but sheep and goats are more common to 
our local farmer because you find many of them rearing sheep and goats alongside their crop enterprise production. So we are now looking at communication within this uh, group of animals. And these animals communicate uh, in various ways for various uh, purposes. So as we can see in the next slide, it shows that uh, sheep or goats, they socialize, that is they, they display a socialization behavior, as we can see in the picture. And then the next slide also show sexuality behavior. So that is when, when the animal is in sexual mood, there are behaviors they display, such as self-marking, sniffing, flaying, lateral approaches, mounting, and so on. These are behaviors in our common uh, farm animal when it comes to sexuality. And then health-related behaviors. The animal also display this, either by isolating themselves. A sick animal will isolate itself from other group of animal. But if not, it's going to be in the midst of other group. Or if kept in a cage, a healthy animal, sheep or goat, will ordinarily be on the, on the stand or on his feet. So even if it's sitting and the owner comes around, ordinarily it will stand up. But if you now see it sitting quietly in the corner and not making a move, then is a kind of behavior that signifies health issue or the animal is lame, as you can see in the case of the sheep raising one leg, or the animal is uh, foaming or salivating. These are communicative signal that are related to health issues. And then uh, the animal could bleed as well. So the, the and the volume of the bleeding also is a, is a, is this, uh, this is a form of a vocalization that farmers need to understand because it could be that the animal is in distress or is in danger or is in need of urgent attention. And that bleeding is beckoning and sending out a message to not just to fellow animals, but even to, to the farmer. Then it could be the physiological appearance of the animal. So we all understand or know that a healthy and good animal must be physiologically sound. But where you have deformity on the animal, like blisters in the mouth or in the jaw or deformity uh, in other parts of the animal or the animal is lean or you see the animal scrubbing itself constantly against objects or wall. These are form of communication from the animal. So all those uh, display of action by farm animals says just two things about them. The animal is passing the message that I am okay and all is well. Or he's saying that I'm not okay, I need attention. So for every form of action, whether by signal, or by vocalization says just two things about the animal. So you see that the animal is okay or it needs attention. So that now brings us to the question because those uh, display or communicative action is also a communication to human 
or livestock keepers? So the question now come up, do livestock farmers understand the language of their animal? So this is very important because if it, it's like living with someone that you don't understand the language of the person. Definitely it will be very difficult for you to relate well with the person or to respond to the needs of the person. So whether farmer now understand the language or not, the next slide shows that the responses or the responsive action taken by the farmer answers that question. So a farmer that conscientiously attend to the animal and promptly take action simply means that he has a very good understanding Um, and in, okay. uh, of the animal, then it means it demand. And when we don't assess the reaction. So the production objective determines action to be taken by farmer as we see in the next uh, slide. So some farmer may probably be raising farm animals for nutrition, either maybe for their family, it could be just to raise income or it could be a means of employment. So the production objective will determine where farmer takes action most if is not responding in every aspect. And that we see in the next slide, fulfilling the production objective, call for action. So for farmers, that are much more interested in raising uh, stock, either as lamb or as dam. So they need to be sure that from birth, the animal are well fed, particularly at birth that the mother is feeding. But sometimes we find some of the dam or doe that are bad mothers, as we are made to understand, that will not feed the animal. So if the farmer do not want to lose that animal, then he must take action to provide alternative feeding for the animal. And if it is health issue, like foot uh, rot disease, then the farmer also need to take action because the animal will surely be raising up the leg. And where the animal looks dull, and it's not healthy, then it's, it needs medical attention, which the farmer needs to provide. And if it is feeding problem, then you need to add additives for the animal to be able to feed well. And if it is bait, sometimes the animal are, not, are unable to give bait themselves. They need assistance. And in this situation, they are bleeding may be very high, especially uh, where the farmers are not around. That shows that it needs attention at that moment to be assisted for parturition. But if the animal do not get uh, that assistance, then it's likely it's either it loses the, the kids or, the, or both the kid and the mother. Because I have a personal experience in this regard where I was, uh, when I was rearing goats, but I put them uh, on a semi-intensive. So, and it happens that uh, one of them wanted to deliver and is having difficulty. Then the bleeding was much. Though I didn't hear the bleeding because it didn't come home. But when I found the animal, it was dead. And those in the neighborhood were telling me that it was that it was bleeding greatly because it wants to deliver. And 
definitely it died. But where I have the opportunity to join Rotamstead Research, where the animals are caged and with timing of their delivery for all the ones that are unable to deliver on their own, we were there to assist, just as we are seeing the picture, to turn the animal, the fetus, so that it can come in. So all these are actions that farmers that understand the language of the animal needs to take. As failure to do that may spell doom for both the animal and the farmer. So with this, the question again says, why the need for understanding animal communicative behavior? So just like the first uh, slide taken from the encyclopedia, uh, I made a modification here that says understanding animal behavior is a sure guarantee to achieving sustainable and profitable animal production. So that is, if farmers have good understanding of their animals, then they can guarantee food and nutrition security, as we see in the next slide, not just to their family, but to the larger society. They can ensure sustainable production. That is, they can always have good stock at all times because they will not lose animals, but they can always have them in number and, and also in a buoyancy. And good animal or healthy animal surely attracts uh, better market prices. So that means it's going to be a good business for the farmer. And then the farmer is able to sustain his means of livelihood. So as we respond to the language of the animal, it's also a good domain for the animal because it means healthiness for the animal and quality life for them. So that's, this has been uh, my focus in research, and this is what we have been trying to guide farmers on, even though many of our farmers have their animals on a free range, at least most of them do have semi-intensive and they do come home. But it is important that we need to pay attention to the animals so that they can always respond to the language of the animal. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Okonla Ade, Lawal Ade Bawale. I must submit that that was a beautiful and informative presentation. And I want to believe that I'm representing everyone on this platform that that was a very good one. Thank you very much. We appreciate that presentation. Now, once again, I will tell people to drop. So we have some questions in the chat box, and I will also implore our people to drop our questions. So that will take us to the first question for you, sir. Are you ready for us, sir? Sir, are you ready for our questions? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, sir. The first question is, sir, do you think that the farmers really understand the message that animals are trying to pass across at any point in time? That's the A part of the question. I'll be adding the B part so that you answer the two together. Okay. The person is asking again that, do you feel most farmers don't pay enough attention or cannot interpret appropriately? As an extensionist, do you think there is a way to improve the understanding of the animals by their keeper? Thank you. Uh, our field interaction with farmers shows that some of them, of course, I would say some of them do understand the language of the animals. But the problem is that most of them don't respond. You know, uh, we, we have a kind of a mindset in Africa or Nigeria that we, we don't really 
really uh, see the need to 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 really respond. But for those who care for the animal, they really understand the language. And uh, when I was uh, putting up this uh, title, I was in a fix of which one to pick because I've, I've interacted with a farmer that has established a kind of socialization with the animal that is human-animal social relation. So a, the, the interaction between them, how human relate that the animal also become affectionate about the farmer just as the farmer become affectionate. So that once the farmer arrives and the animal hears the voice, they all run to the farmer. That's uh, a way apart. But in this context, which I have uh, have chosen, the observation is that even when they see the need or when they hear the animal or are able to see the signal, uh, they are like they they are more reluctant to really uh, respond. They believe that the animal can take care of themselves and whatever the outcome, that's what is their own uh, gain. And that is why it now becomes uh, a special need in the line of extension that farmers need to be educated the more, that if they really want to be more profitable and sustainable in the animal, then they will need to pay attention. And for you to be able to do that, it means your animal must be more of intensive or semi-intensive. But if it is extensive, well, you can't even know whether the animal is communicating or not. Okay. But if it is semi-intensive, it means the animal will come home and then you must be around to take a look at them. And then from there, you can see the, the signal. So that is the aspect in which extension needs to work on when it comes to animal behavior or animal communication. So I really think that you two have questions. done it justice to that question. But there is a question that is a bit related to that. Okay. The question is asking, can we say animals communicate or we just don't pay attention to them? The animals communicate. Okay. It's only that uh, most farmers do not pay attention. Even when they perceive that communication, they, is, the, is that a reluctance to respond? That's just, you know, we have a kind of a behavior towards animals in Africa or Nigeria that, uh, as they will say, so once the farmer is able to get meat or money from the animal, that's what they are interested in. So they believe that whatever one is able to survive, is okay for them. But if they are losing animals, then they are losing wealth. That is just the situation thank for you. now. Thank, thank you so much. You have done justice to that. Then another question is coming from Victor Oyeniro from Arkansas University. He's asking that what is the best response for a farmer having an animal with bad modern ability, as this may affect the neonate and the farmer's productive skill? Did you get that question? Sure, sure, oh. sure. Okay, sir. Well, uh, as we as we are all a. Uh, uh, student of uh, agriculture and we have been taught the principle so once you have a animal with uh bad mother traits or you know the next thing is to call the to call the animal and replace it that is why we have a uh, breeding and uh, selection and replacement and so on but if a farmer fails to see that that animal is not a good mother then yes. it will continue to lose. So that's in fact, that's a kind of communication as well, where you see that the mother is not responding, uh, is not taking care of the young ones. Then 
the best solution is to call the animal. So if you truly want to maintain your production sustainability. Thank you, Dr. Olade Lawal Adebowali. Another question is saying, with the production systems we generally employ in Nigeria, how easy do you think it is to monitor the behavior of animals for any related changes? So thank you. Uh, as we know that we have a three basic system of animal keeping. It's either intensive, semi-intensive, or extensive. Extensive, if a farmer go on extensive, then there is no way he can even see or know whether the animal is communicating or not, because it means the animals are not around, they are not fed for, he doesn't care for them. But for extent, yeah, for intensive and semi-intensive, so it implies that the farmer is already taking an action to uh, relate with the animal. It means if it is semi-intensive, which is more common than intensive, if the animal goes, at least before they go out in the morning, you are the one that goes there to open the door. At that time, you use the opportunity to oh, examine yeah. them. And when they return, you are going there to close. You don't just count the number of the animals, whether they are complete when returning, but you need to observe and see. And if they also communicate, you will, you, you will surely know. So like, like I, I read a number of uh, livestock. Uh, uh, another experience here is that uh, I kept a, a set of chicken in a cage, especially these are local one that has just a uh, hatch and I kept them in a cage overnight. And then I was hearing how the mother was uh, making the cock sound and jumping over in the cage. I was wondering, is it uh, so happy or excited? And that was overnight. So early in the morning, when I went out, I observed that soldier ant has entered the cage and has killed all the chicks. Oh. So then and I said, ah, this is what the mother was saying. Wow. So but the mother was able to force herself out. But all the chicks, about 12 or 15 of them, dead. So that shows that farmer must be cognitive and must be conscious when the behavior of animal is not usual. That's why you must understand their normal behavior. That is when things are calm. How do they how do they behave? What what display do they make? So that when there is a danger or any other need, you'll be able to know on time. If not, you will misinterpret and danger may set in, just like I experienced there. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, beautiful illustration and answer to question. The questions are just coming in. Okay. And considering our time, maybe you have to help us to reduce, or I don't know, but we have okay. so many questions. We'll make we it short, it. sir. We'll make okay, it short, sir. okay. Okay. Another one is coming from Lazarus. He's asking, how do cues help us understand the welfare of animals? So that's See, the... Yes, yes. C -U -C -U -E -S. E -S. Yes, yes. Yes. So that's uh is that's why I said you must understand when the animal is in normal situation. And when they are when you understand, it's just like uh, you need to be able to identify uh original notes in terms of money. So you don't bother about counterfeit. Counterfeit may be many, but just be able to identify the original. So when you see counterfeit, you quickly know. The same way, just understand the normal behavior of the animal you are taking care. Then when other irrational behavior sets in, then you know that something is wrong and then you need to take action. So, and it is not always when something is wrong or when the animal needs attention, you always be able to take attention. It's very crucial to help us in farm animal management. 
the questions are just coming in. Thank you for making the response short now. What are some common vocalization or sounds that animals use to communicate and how can we interpret their meaning? Maybe just give us a few examples, sir. Well, for every animal, it's just the way every animal uh, vocalize, like sheep and goats we bleed, yeah. chicken we coo, and so on. That's just the language. There is no other way to eat. You know that this is how this animal sound. So you need to understand that. But when nothing is wrong with them, you see that that goes, it's just like human. We talk normally when nothing is wrong. But when something is wrong setting, we shout on top of our voices. So just the same way, that's how animal will do. And that's why I put those uh, pictures where the animal uh, were bleeding. So you can see the extent to which the mouth was open. That's not normal bleeding. It's an indication of either danger or a need by the animal. Thank you very much. I think this question has been answered before, but let me just ask you to be double sure. This okay. one is coming from Dr. Samuel Duro Sharo. How can good human animal interaction be achieved and encouraged? How what? can good human animal interaction be achieved and encouraged? Are you there? I guess that's the network. Maybe I should just briefly talk about something before he comes back. Uh, yeah, the last question you asked was on different types of vocalization and uh, uh, different animals have a different way of vocalizing, of course, because of their differences in species. But in the chickens, we have about close to 20 types of vocalization. And this talks about different things. So we have the feed call, we have the alarm call, we have the pleasure call, we have the roosting call, we have a close to 20. So we need to understand our animals properly. Okay, he's back. And from this, you know what is, what is really happening because the, the sound differs and the intensity also differs depending on what is happening in that uh, scenario. Thank you. So, okay, please unmute. You're welcome back, sir. Mm -hmm. Please unmute, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, you can go on. Oh, sir. Sorry. I need to unmute him. Okay. Uh -huh. So, thank you, Ma. So, la, la, thank you for bringing those uh, scientific uh, description. Like, like I said, we in extension, we, we talk in a simple man language. And that's what I want to maintain in this uh, lecture exactly. while we work with. Mm -hmm scientists to understand this language very well. So we simplify it. So that's why I use what is familiar that changes the voices. So like I said, in that human relation, it, it, whenever he drives into the compound, the animal runs to him. And what he does is to ensure that he drops something for them to pick. So. Okay. And by that, the animal already know. I, 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 and I also recall that when I was very small, even when I don't understand science and it, I was so small, just small boy, but I so much uh, love uh, small ruminant sheep and goats. Whenever one is bought, I'm around to be feeding it and so on. But I always want them to be on their stand. I don't like animals sitting down. I want them always seeing them standing. But I know that anytime I go to the sack to give them food, they will stand up. The moment I observe that, even when there is no food in the sack, I go there and they will all stand up. So that's a kind of a, a, a kind of social relation that one can establish and several other ways like that. Okay, thank you, sir, for that beautiful answer. There is this question that is a bit related to what you just answered. Does okay. the rural farmer's interpretation of animal behavior correlate with what is scientifically proven? 
Thank you. you. That's a question? very nice uh, question. It's As a matter good. of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, we we are just back from field on a research work on that because we look at scientific interpretation of every display and we now generate a kind of a item for farmers to respond that if you see this sign, what does it mean? Of course, what the farmers are interested in is just something basic that will make the animal well. They may not be able to understand the uh, the scientific uh, tone, but they only know that uh, the animal is sick. But they may not be able to give you, analyze the, the depth of that sickness and say it is this, it is that. That's the simple things they will know. So some of them do know. And by the time we are out of our analysis, they will be able to know whether they are interpreting correctly. So that's how we answer that one for now. So if opportunity comes, I, I, then that may be a whole topic for us. <laughs> I think we are all anxious to see the output of that research because I would like to see okay. if farmers can easily say, oh, this is pleasure call. This is like Dr. Mrs. explains. We would like to see the yes. output of that. Another question is also coming from Dr. Olua <coughs> Shewigasi. How can okay. a farmer differentiate between just any distress call and when the animal is at the point of giving birth? When the animal is? At the point of giving birth and just any other distress call. Can a farmer differentiate? Well, it, it depends on the status of the animal, which the farmer must be familiar with. If, if, maybe if the animal is pregnant and is able to calculate that within this period, that is when the parturition should come, he may be able to know that, okay, this is a, a bed related issue or this is a distress issue. But the, the problem which we observe with farmer, especially when it comes to parturition is that uh, they believe that they have no action to take in it. They believe, and that's why the, the, the victim says uh, that <laughs> you don't have a nurse or someone to deliver, that the animal will deliver naturally. So that's the, that interpretation, even if the animal is saturation, the farmer may know, but he believe he doesn't have anything to do, that God will do that on his own. Any other distress call, uh, farmers do show up. Is it there? Another network issue. Wow. Mm. Actually, that is a good research area. If we are able to understand what the rural farmer that have never been to school can interpret about the behavior of their animals and see how it correlates with, with what's already exists in the literature, that would be a very good uh, research area or research idea. And also, if it is possible that these behaviors are recorded so that it will be sh the farmers would see it or maybe... Um, happening directly in front of the farmer and he gives the interpretation and also this same video is shown to somebody who is knowledgeable in animal behavior to give his or our own interpretation and let us see the correlation right, in too. that yeah. and um, please go on sir okay I'm on. Yeah. I've landed. Okay. I've landed you are welcome. That you are welcome, okay. sir. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Another question is coming from Dr. Luashio in that series. Rural farmers give their animals names and the animals respond to those names. How is this sure. done? How? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I've had an experience with farmers in this regard. So they give names to the animals and you know you it is repeated the uh, calling as they repeat the name they also back it up by dropping food for them and the you know the the animal now become attached 
and also be conscious that you know animal they do hear our voice so and uh, you know that a uh, voice is a is a kind is, is like a program so the animal is able to hear that this kind word is for me and it must have attached that with the farmer because when the farmer call it a name the farmer must do something you see that you drop something to eat or you you pamper the animal or you rub your hand on it and so on until the animal becomes used to it so like the one i said that that uh, lecturer in our school rearing animal exactly that's how he names the animal because when we're discussing that's exactly what it does as well. And there is this uh, late farmer. I know uh, maybe Dr. Durosharu will remember. I can't even in uh, order that. He also related to us that the animal has so much, he has programmed them that they have become attached to timing. That when the animal returns, he knows that it is this time because the animal will also return. And if they want to, they will do certain things when they come for him to know that they are around and they will have to come out. So, and so on. So, farmers yes. do that in various ways, especially those that have taken the animal beyond uh, animal for food or for marketing. They have taken them a little aspect and then they go to that extent. Oh, thank you for that answer. We still have, like, I think we'll just take five more because of our time. Let's just okay. take five questions more. This one is saying, is it possible to create a good social relationship in cattle and sheep farmers reared in extensive farms? Extensive. Yes. Uh, is it possible? Extensive, that would be a bit difficult because it's just like, let me use this illustration. It's just like in a family, even of the same parents, but you are all living apart. One is living with your uncle in Shokoto. That bond will not be there. <laughs> That's exactly how extensive farm animal is. The bond between the animal and the farmers will not be there. But if at least semi-intensive, uh -huh, that bond will be there. <laughs> Thank you for that beauty. That illustration enough captures <laughs> the answer to that question. This one is coming from Abayomi Tomori. Since animals communicate, are there any specific visual cues or gestures commonly used by livestock keepers to communicate back with their animals? Did you get that? Yes, yes, yes. For those, you know, like that's why I said, do farmers understand the language? For those that are does, they, they, they communicate. And the only way we know that farmer is also communicating back to the animal is to respond to the signals, cues, and vocalization of the animal. When you respond, and then the, the animal will show gratitude because it will show that it's satisfied that you have actually responded. So that is when we know that the farmer is communicating, is taking action. So, but if you don't take action, then you are not communicating or you are taking wrong action. It's the same thing in human. You send somebody, get me a cup of water and it comes with empty, empty cup. <laughs> he has taken action, but he's taking wrong action. So it's just the same way with animal. Thank you very much. I think this person that is asking question on extensive farmers is into abattoirs and market. He's okay. asking again, how can farmers improve their relationship with their extensive farmers since this affects animals a lot at the market and abattoirs? Is it possible in the abattoir? If in the abattoir? Are, yes, for instance, can we <laughs> understand? Abattoir, that is a, abattoir is a danger zone. <laughs> and the animals are conscious of that <laughs> because... <laughs> As you take them out and they are not coming back, and you even know our own abattoir is even in the presence of other animals, you are slaughtering. So yes. the animal knows that. So there can't be any social relation. It's like you see somebody that wants to 
uh, endanger your life. You, you, you cannot have a good relation with the person. So okay, you, think... you relate well with the animal by soft care for them. You take care of their needs. Then the animal will respond to you as well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. As much as people are appreciating those responses, I think this will be the second to the last question for today. Okay. <laughs> How do we still maintain our relationship with a particular animal when it is showing aggressive behavior? That one is coming from Timitayo Eletu. When the animal is showing aggressive, for, for animal to be aggressive, mm -hmm. then something is wrong. So the farmer needs to understand why the animal is aggressive. Let me take a simple example. You get your goat or sheep from the market and you want to take it home. You put your rope and the animal refuses to go. And you start beating and it's not going. If you release the animal, it will return to the flock. So it's only telling you that I don't want to leave my colleagues. So that's a simple analogy I can give. So animal will not just be aggressive without a cause. So failure to understand that cause, then it means you can't blend with the animal unless you understand that cause and you address it, then you'll be able to do that. Thank you, sir. This is the last question for today. <laughs> okay, ma. <laughs> Are there cultural okay, differences <laughs> in animal communication within a particular species or across different species? Are there what? Cultural differences in animal Cultural differences. <laughs> if, I, if I want to talk about culture in animal, it, it still has to do with their instinct. So you see that animal of the same species, they communicate more and even in the same way. But to another species, usually their communication is usually in a defensive way because we are not familiar. So what's bringing us together? So you see that is making a kind of defense against those set of animal. But if it is the same set, aha, uh -huh. except if the same set but coming from another environment entirely which is not familiar with. That's when another issue will come. So if, if I want to talk about animal culture, I will say it, it just has to do with the, the instinct or the genetic makeup that makes them to behave in a way that we scientists are trying to understand. So it's not that they have their own uh, cultural dimension like we humans. Animal, okay. Thank you very much for all those responses. We appreciate your presence in the webinar series of today. Permit me Thank to you. hand you over to the coordinator of Animal Welfare Group Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Oluwashi Yasiri, as we continue the program. Thank you so much to our guest speaker, Professor Okonlade, and uh, our moderator, Dr. Ojelade. I, I am so glad today because seeing somebody from an extension, you know, background, you know, Doing justice to a topic in animal behavior, I was even saying I will talk to my department if they need extra, <laughs> extra <laughs> hands, if they need somebody that can help <laughs> teach them. Is the, is, the, is the link and collaboration that we need. <laughs> yes, but you know, the perspective from which you are coming in is quite interesting and I think it's very novel because it is not something new. These farmers, they have an idea of the behavior of the animals. It's we are just building on all these things, you know, based sure, on sure. Science and providing scientific evidence to all this. So I really appreciate your time and thank you for sharing this knowledge with us. Thank you to all the participants. If you have um, any further comments, kindly indicate by the using of the uh, by the use of the reaction button, then then uh, you're free to give your comment. I dropped in the chat box that we, are, we would have a few minutes of um, discussion. The, the reason why is I noticed that there's, this topic is quite interesting and we may have people that want to contribute or make uh,
further comments on this. So we can just do that in the next five minutes. Actually, we have exceeded our time, but just for the benefit of people that join, if you still have time, we can just do a five minute discussion on this topic because you know we are trying to open up other areas for people that can uh, go into research. So I have, uh, thank you, Fami, for this. Thank you, thank you. I'll, okay, Dr. Duro Sharo, you want to say something, please? Uh, Professor Lawa Adipo Wale, that was you, a sir. very interesting uh, presentation, and uh, you made it very simple, so everybody could understand you. I once listened to your class as an undergraduate student, now I'm listening to you again today, <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. And the, the summary of all is that animals communicate, we just don't pay attention to them. Yes, maybe because we don't understand their language, but if we really pay attention to them, we should be able to get what they are saying, either through their chemicals that they produce, uh, uh, tactile form or uh, vocalization. So they communicate a lot. We just need to pay attention to them. So thank you very much for making it very simple. So, and I know everybody understood you very well. Thank you so much. And I Thank believe you. we are going to call you another day to come and present. I think I'm beginning to fall in love with extension agents now. We <laughs> not too, you know, we use a lot of jargons in science, but the way you simplify it made it more simple. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who else wants to comment? Who else wants to say something about today's meeting? Okay, Ojelade. Okay. Please unmute. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask this. Don't say I'm being partial. But do you okay. think my fish also talk the way you are discussing <laughs> today? <laughs> I want to know if my fish can also talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I may not be able to say much on that, but I know they do talk. Okay. Because uh, I do rear fish, and if you if you if they if they are hungry, you know they just lie low. But the moment you get to the pond, just drop a pond, and you see the excitation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if I you do not I do that. If they are sick, it's just like those animals. They will just lie low. Then you know that something is wrong. And then it can I, also know through their body when yes. they start feeling skin and so on. So that's the little I can say. Because I will pay I more attention to my room fish. In that. <laughs> I'll pay more attention to my fish. Thank you very much for that presentation. <laughs> Educating. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Who else wants to contribute? Please feel free to contribute. Feel free to drop in any suggestion. If you want to say something, indicate so I can unmute you. I would like to appreciate all the participants. Um, Samuel Durusharo, Abayomi Tomori, Otibe Okun, Fami Idris. Thank you for joining us from Indonesia. You've been part of us. <laughs> and uh, Kwamatoi Lazarus. I, I think he's joining from Gumbi. Thank you for joining us. And I'm, I think also you're joining for the first time. So you're welcome. Emiya Yusuf, you're welcome. I'll try to see if I know where you're joining from. A little. I guess this iPhone is uh, Safian. If I'm, I don't know if I'm correct. Safian, are you there? Ahmed Abi, okay. Some of the participants requested for the PowerPoint or the PDF of the okay. PowerPoint. So sure. You're it, happy it can be given out. Them. Yes. And also let us use this opportunity. We are on Facebook, we are on LinkedIn, we are on YouTube, we are, we are on Twitter. So we would also, also like to appreciate it if you can talk about what you have learned today or follow us on this.
platform and then you know make this post and let people see that we're actually making progress because animal behavior and welfare is a feed that cut across a lot of you know a lot of uh field but most people don't know so there could be the possibility that we have somebody in extension and doesn't even know how he can relate extension to animal behavior and welfare i know there is a should be a 300 or 400 level student that has been following me on LinkedIn and is in extension. And he, he says he wants to do some animal <laughs> behavior research. So, of course, I will link him back to you, Prof. And then okay, you can okay, help me uh, groom him. So because he's more in your department, it will be also be easy. So please uh, thank you, uh, Barnabas, for joining. Uh, Emed Young, thank you. Gideon Ajibola, thank you for joining. And Aki Yemi Rukayot. Thank you so much.